Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories you are tracking for you. Air quality in Indian capital deteriorates as residents defy the Wali firecracker ban. Cyclone Sitrang lashes Bangladesh, killing at least nine, floods low lying areas. And political activists protest against soaring inflation in Gilgit, Baltistan. And now for all the details, residents of Indian capital New Delhi woke up to a hazy Tuesday morning as the air quality index plummeted to very poor in the city after people defied the ban on bursting crackers as they celebrated Diwali, the Hindu festival of lights. Due to decreased wind speed and added firecracker pollution, residents complained of breathing discomfort. Indian capital New Delhi experienced a drop in the air quality on Tuesday, a day after people burst firecrackers to celebrate the Hindu festival of lights, Diwali, despite strict government restrictions. The air quality index across various hotspots of the city of about 20 million was in the very poor category, with the reading being above 300 in most parts of the city. पटाके इतने चले हैं मना करने के बावजूद भी कोई रुका नहीं है और प्रदूषण इतना बढ़ गया है कि सांस लेने में दिक्कत हो रही है Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal's government said last week that people who let off firecrackers during Diwali would face up to six months in jail under a broader ban introduced to help combat extreme winter pollution. But still the ban was defied on Monday. ban was defied on Monday. The 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 ban was सांसों में लेने में दिक्कत हो रही है निकलने में दिक्कत हो रही है इन सब चीजों से यह फिर भी सरकार ने काफी बैन के हद से ज्यादा मतलब कि वही सांस लिए अच्छी तरह ले इंसान इसलिए पटाखों पे फिर भी लोग वाग अपनी जिम्मेवारियां नहीं समझते Delhi is the world's most polluted capital and its air becomes particularly bad from mid December to February as heavy cold air traps dust vehicle emissions and smoke from burning crop stubble in states like Punjab and Haryana. And Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi congratulated Rishi Sunak on being appointed as UK's Prime Minister, the first British Asian and first Hindu to rise to the top position. People across India also expressed excitement and pride over the development. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday congratulated Rishi Sunak on being appointed Britain's new Prime Minister and said he looked forward to working closely together with his Indian origin British counterpart on global issues and implementing Roadmap 2030. Indians expressed excitement and pride over Sunak's appointment, the first British Asian and first Hindu to take the top job to replace Liz Truss as leader of the Conservative Party. Indians typically take immense pride when those who trace their roots to the nation of 1.4 billion people do well abroad. I think it's an exciting thing to the extent that one doesn't have to be a certain colour or a class in order to become the Prime Minister of any country. I think we've passed those boundaries. That's a good thing. Uh, it's Conservative Party after all, so I hope that their policies are ones that are good for all people, not just for the wealthy. If you तो आज वो बहुत गर्व महसूस कर रहा होगा कि हमारे में से कोई एक आज उस देश का प्रधानमंत्री बना है कि जिसने हम पे कम से कम 100 साल से ऊपर राज किया है और इसमें कोई दो राय नहीं कि आज हर वो भारतीय बहुत गर्व से कह सकता है कि आज यकीन माने कि भई जो तरक्की उन्होंने की है उसके लिए हम सारे भारतवर्ष उनका 
स्वागत भी करते हैं और उनको पूरे भारतवर्ष से हम उनको शुभकामनाएं भी देते हैं 42 टू ईयर ओल्ड सुनक्स फैमिली माइग्रेटेड इन दी नाइनटीन सिक्सटीज टू ब्रिटेन विच रूल्ड इंडिया फॉर अबाउट टू हंड्रेड ईयर्स बिफोर दी साउथ एशियन कंट्री गेन इंडिपेंडेंस इन नाइनटीन फोर्टी सेवन He said on Monday that Britain faces serious economic challenges and needs stability and unity. Liz Truss resigned after 44 days as her economic program sparked panic in financial markets. And in news from Bangladesh, a cyclone roared into the Bangladesh coast on Tuesday, killing at least nine people, destroying houses, uprooting trees, and disrupting road. power and communication links the cyclone also affected india's eastern coastal states however no damage or casualty was reported till the last reports came in residents in bangladesh capital of dhaka faced flooded streets and traffic disruption after a cyclone slammed into the country on tuesday triggering strong winds and heavy rain and killing at least 9 people Mass evacuations before Cyclone Sitrang made landfall on the west coast helped save lives but the full extent of the casualties and damage would only be known after communications were fully restored officials said Trishaw riders pedaled through flooded streets while some vehicles were stranded and people waded through knee deep water in the city bhoyer karone amader rickshaw chalte khub koshto hocche ar je obostha je durbhoge achi पानी का जी चुदूर दिखे रास्ता करे पानी पानी भीतर रिक्शा चला खूब पोस्ट होते हैं। The cyclone barreled in from the Bay of Bengal with winds gusting up to 55 miles per hour and a storm surge of about 10 feet that flooded low-lying coastal areas and cut power and telephone links. Most of the people killed were crushed by falling trees, officials said. मुझे फिर कारों ने जो झोर बिस्ती हुए से ये बिस्ती कारों ने हमारे रे गोलीर पानी ते तोलिए जाए अब उनका मर पानी होए The cyclone also affected the eastern Indian state of West Bengal. Civil defence officials alerted tourists and locals to not venture near the sea. South Asia has experienced increasing extreme weather in recent years causing large scale damage. Environmentalists warn that climate change would lead to more disasters especially in densely populated areas like Bangladesh. Well the Pakistan government has requested an inquiry into the killing of renowned Pakistani journalist Arshad Sharif who was shot dead in Kenya when police hunting car thieves opened fire on the vehicle he was travelling in as it drove through their roadblock without stopping the circumstances of Sharif's death have sparked widespread outrage in Pakistan Pakistani government officials have requested an inquiry into the killing of well-known Pakistani journalist Arshad Sharif who was shot dead in Nairobi when police hunting car thieves opened fire on the vehicle he was traveling in as it drove through their roadblock without stopping Arshad Sharif worked for many years as a prime-time television news show host for ARY News in Pakistan and had recently fled the country citing threats to his life A Kenyan police report said a relative of Sharif had been driving the car which drove through the roadblock without stopping even after officers opened fire. A Kenyan police watchdog has said it is investigating the Sunday's incident. Pakistan's information minister Maryam Aurangzeb visited Arshad Sharif's residence in Islamabad and said Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif had spoken by phone to Kenya's president. and had requested to ensure fair and transparent investigation into the incident his body was also being dispatched back home wazir azam ne wazarat e dakhla aur foreign ministry ko ye hidayat jari ki hai ke tamam jo procedural administrative work hai usko jald se jald mukammal kiya jaye aur iski investigation end to end puri investigation wazarat e dakhla ko is mein hai ka jo wahan केन्या में नरोबी के अंदर जो पुलिस है उसके साथ रबते में रहकर जल्द मुकम्मल करने की हदायत की है The circumstances of Sharif's death has sparked widespread outrage in Pakistan from officials, journalists and others. Former Prime Minister Imran Khan condemned the death and said Sharif had been murdered for his journalistic work. He called for a judicial investigation into the incident. 
Moving on, political activists recently held a massive protest rally in Gilgit Baltistan over rising inflation and abolition of subsidies given to residents of the illegally occupied region that has made life difficult, especially for the poor. They accused the Pakistan government of pushing more and more people into abject poverty through its failed economic policies. Political activists of the Awami Action Committee and local residents in Gilgit, Baltistan recently held a protest over soaring inflation, high electricity bills and against the abolition of subsidies which are particularly hitting the poor and middle classes in the illegally occupied region. The protesters claim that on subsidies on a number of food items, including wheat by the Pakistani government, the inflation has gone through the roof. They accuse the Pakistani government of pushing more and more people into abject poverty through its failed economic policies. Our issues are subsidies, bills, the bill, our taxes, the issue of rent, rent renewal, and our government's policy and our government's policy. सब्सिडी का तो कोई मुजाकराती टीम नहीं है, बल्कि उसमें यहाँ कटौती हो गई है और नाकिस है, गंदम है, दूसरे के रेट बढ़ना है, उनके इनके हाथ में है, यहाँ मुकामी जो है, यहाँ लोकल गवर्नमेंट के हाथ में, वो तो ये अभी भी कर सकते हैं। उसके रेवेन्यू एक्ट को हम मुकम्मल मुस्तरत करते हैं, उसके जो गैर मकामी अफराद को मकामी लोगों के को इतमाद में लिए बगैर दिया जा रहा है बल्कि नवाजा जा रहा है उसके खिलाफ यहाँ पे एहतजाज में है The activists blame the locals are not even consulted when the government brings about such legislations. The subsidies are not charity but an obligation set by the UN charters. They said there is a stooge government in the region but it only helps Islamabad fill its treasuries through economic depredations. In news from Afghanistan, while the world observed Polio Day on Monday to celebrate global efforts to eradicate the crippling disease, Afghan officials said two positive cases of the virus have been recorded in Afghanistan this year. Dr. Sharafat Zaman Amar, spokesperson for the Ministry of Public Health, said the positive cases were recently documented in Patkita and Kunar province. In 2022, the ministry conducted eight vaccination campaigns in high-risk provinces. Zaman said adding that efforts are underway to guarantee that no polio cases are found in Afghanistan in the future. Polio has been virtually eradicated worldwide, but Afghanistan and Pakistan are the only two countries where polio remains endemic due to reasons including inaccessible terrain and suspicion of outside interference. An Indian space enthusiast gathered at planetariums and observatories to watch the shadows cast by the celestial bodies as a partial solar eclipse was witnessed on Tuesday. Meanwhile, Hindu devotees bathed in holy rivers and temples were shut to weaken the believed negative effects brought by the eclipse. Take a look. Hindu devotees swamped the banks of the holy rivers to take a dip while temples across India closed their doors to weaken the believed inauspicious effects of the partial solar eclipse witnessed on Tuesday. Priests in India's holy Prayagraj and Haridwar towns locked the gates of temples 12 hours before the eclipse started. According to Hindu beliefs, celestial bodies like the sun and the moon emit negative energies during an eclipse and the temples are closed to minimize any disturbance that may cause in the effects of divine energy on devotees. So, the reason for the 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 साफ सफाई की जाती है दुलाई इत्यादि पूजन अर्चन किया जाता है खुद का शुद्धिकरण किया जाता है नाग स्नान ध्यान करके फिर उसके बाद में भगवान का पूजन अर्चन वंदन होता है स्पेस लवर्स थ्रोंग्ड प्लैनेटेरियम्स एंड ऑब्जर्वेटरीज टू टेक अ ग्लिम्स ऑफ द मून पार्शियली कवरिंग द सन एंड क्रिएटिंग अ सिलुएट द इक्लिप्स बिगन एट 8:58 जीएमटी इन आइसलैंड एंड एंडेड ऑफ द कोस्ट ऑफ इंडिया एट अराउंड 1300 जीएमटी a solar eclipse occurs when the moon passes between the earth and the sun. It's a rare event. We have a lot of opportunities in life. So we, are, we were too excited. Like, we were doing planning for 2-3 weeks. We were preparing for the planetarium. We were going to come daily. And today is the day for the eclipse. India saw the eclipse starting at 1100 GMT, with New Delhi witnessing the eclipse at 1059 GMT. 
Scientists say India is likely to see its next solar eclipse on August 2, 2027. Well, that's all they have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.